where does it start? Where does where where should we start? No, the beginning, but like where's in the PD like where's the page? No. Oh on the PDF? It's like page ninety three. It's like a ways in. Uh, why I got so it. deep? There's a big interview. The rage. So it's the oh. rage of Achilles. Yes. But the thing is we really can't start reading there because um there is a lot of introduction that we have to go through, but it's okay. I'm gonna breeze you through it as quick as possible. Um, so the Iliad is one part of an eight part book series, basically. Um, only two survive, uh, but we know what happens in the other ones because of people like, um, what do you call them? Aristotle and those people. So we know like what happens in those books because other people wrote about them. Um, so the Odyssey is the other part of the cycle. So it's the Iliad and the Odyssey, the ones that we have in their entirety, which is pretty cool. Uh, Cause they're the longest ones. What? <laughs> I guess I'll mention that Murat's in an internet cafe in Japan and can't speak. That do we not have the other books? We don't have the other books. We have the Iliad and the Odyssey. Oh, where did they go? <laughs> we lost them. Um, we just don't have them. Okay. Yeah. It's in Sad. They were written thousands of, you're welcome, thousands of years ago. Um, How many? Between two and three. Oh, really? Yeah, maybe even older. It's like an oral tradition. That's sick. Thanks. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> 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 All right. So we know quite a bit about them because of other people. Um, but that said, the Iliad is, well, have you, did, I, did you guys read the first book? No. 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 That's Nobody okay. read before class. Okay. No, it's all right. No, I couldn't. <laughs> Do you know what it is about without having read it? Um. No. <laughs> Greece. Okay. Greece. Yeah. It, it is. It is. You're right. Wait, it's Greece versus Turkey. Murat's gonna love it. You're right. It is Greece versus Turkey. But this is where, like Troy happens. Yes, this is where Troy happens. Good. Oh. Mm -hmm. Can we win it yet? No, you, you don't. Spoilers. Oh. No. Oh. It's okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> All right. So. The main events of the Trojan War that you might know beforehand include the Trojan horse and Achilles getting shot in the heel, the Achilles heel. So neither of those events happen in the Iliad. Um, the Iliad's about the Trojan War. It's about about a few months of the 10th and final, maybe ninth, middle of the ninth to the 10th final years of the war. So it's about a few months in the last years of the war. We don't see the end of the war. We don't see the beginning of the war. We don't see Achilles getting shot in the heel. We don't see the Trojan horse. So what do we see? <laughs> Other stuff. In a, lot of, a lot of boats. Is this the one with all the boats? There's a lot of boats. Yeah, I think book two or three lists boats and we'll just kind of skim over that one. But yeah. What's, okay. <laughs> we'll talk about why that is. We'll skip the boats. We'll skip the boats, don't we? We can't skip the boats. Okay. <laughs> Rob wants the boats. I'm going to I think we need to. I think we need to. I need your consent on a few items to continue. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Alec, what's up? Does Alexa want the boats? Dixie, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so I'm gonna tell you all the events that you kind of need to know for the context, because like I said, you know, the Iliad is in an eight book book series, basically. And we have like books three and six 
So we lose a lot of context. Um, so essentially, Zeus, who you probably all do know and hate, um, king of the gods, this all starts with him falling in love with a woman, because most stories start with that in Greek mythology. This time, he falls in love with Thetis, who is a Nairid, Nairid, which basically means sea nymph. Um, Thetis? Thetis, or Thetis. Thetis. Oh. T-H-E-T-I-S. Thetis. Yeah. Thetis. He doesn't fall in love with a fetus. Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you I figure worse things have happened. I wouldn't put it past him, yeah. Yeah. So, he's in love with Thetis. Now, the problem is that Zeus was given a prophecy that one of his children was going to dethrone him like he dethroned his father, Kronos, king of the Titans. So, while he is in love with Thetis, he knows that he can't be with her, never mind the fact that he is, to, he is married uh, to his sister. So he gives Thetis to Peleus, or Peleus, king of Phthia, where the Myrmidons live. So Peleus and Thetis will eventually have a son Achilles. We'll get to him eventually, but he's not important at the moment. So at their wedding, Eris, the goddess of discord, wasn't invited. This is kind of like Maleficent. She got very angry, and so she threw a golden apple into the reception party, and on the apple it said, for the most beautiful. So Athena, Hera, and Aphrodite, who are three gods, goddesses, you probably know them, they argue over who gets the apple. But no one wants to settle it for them because nobody wants to anger the other two goddesses. So Zeus decides, all right, we'll get a third party, no big deal. And he swoops down to Troy and he picks up Paris, uh, who's just like a dude. And he's like, all right, Paris, like Trojan, um, you're in charge. <laughs> decide which of these three goddesses is the most beautiful and so he's like all right whatever so they come down and he can't decide or he's like afraid to decide so there's a few uh extra things the goddesses say so Hera says if you pick me I'll make you king of Europe and Asia Minor and he should have gone with that one but he didn't that um, was a good one yeah and then Athena says well if you pick me I'll make you very wise and skilled at battle which like okay but like you could be king of europe in asia minor but whatever and then aphrodite comes down and she's like i'm aphrodite like i'm obviously the hottest one but like beyond that like if you pick me i will give you the most beautiful woman on earth i'll make her fall in love with you and he's like that one <laughs> so he picks aphrodite um but he's like i'm gonna wait for like a decade or so to cash in on that offer, don't ask. And then he just kind of nopes for a little bit and is not in the story for a bit. Uh, so whatever. So by the way, this most beautiful woman on earth is Helen, who becomes Helen of Troy, uh, eventually. At the moment, she is just Helen, and um, she's you know marrying age about fourteen or whatever. And so her father <laughs> has been like, "Hey, who wants to marry my most beautiful woman on earth daughter?" And a hundred something people come by and they're like, me. Um, they're all princes and kings and stuff. And they're like, I want Helen. Um, they all come by. And similar to uh, earlier with the Apple discussion, nobody wants, the, the Helen's father doesn't want to pick one of them because he's going to make the other ones angry. And they're all very important kings and stuff. So he goes, all right, like, what am I going to do? And Odysseus, who's important for like the Odyssey and other, you know, stupid stuff he shows up and he's like yo I'm very smart like let's just like draw straws and whoever wins her wins her but the rest of us will sign a pact and we'll defend Helen's marriage no matter what so that means we won't attack her if we lose so beta oh what <laughs> so beta yeah so beta <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um so everyone's like, that That sounds great, Odysseus. So they draw straws, and this guy named Menelaus wins Helen. And Menelaus is the king of Sparta, who you probably have heard of. Yeah, Sparta. He's the king of Sparta. And Helen is now Helen of Sparta. So that's great. Uh, and now they have a gigantic army of Greek kings and princes who are going to defend Helen at all costs. You can probably see how the Trojan War came to be, but we'll get to that in a second. So. Um, she's chilling in Sparta. She has a daughter named Hermione. Uh, Hermione's about nine. And Paris is like, 
wow, like I won the most beautiful woman on earth, like 20 years ago, I'm going to cash in on that. <laughs> so he calls up Aphrodite and he's like, Hey, I want the most beautiful woman on earth. And she's like, no problem. So she swoops down to Sparta, picks up Helen, brings her to Troy. Um, how that happens. There are many different versions of that myth. Sometimes Aphrodite just brings her, sometimes Paris freaks her and abducts her, sometimes they fall in love and they run off willingly. Let's go with that one. Um, Detroit. Why, <laughs> Why did he take the deal? Why did he take what? Because he was falling in love naturally. Then why did he pick Aphrodite? Yeah, it seems like if he chose that one, but yet had to do all the work himself, yeah. it's like... I know. Well, you know, they contradict each other. It's diff this is this this is part of the book that we don't have because it's lost. So there's a lot of contradicting, like, yeah, deep lore. Deep lore. I know. <laughs> All right, we're almost to the war. So they run off together with Troy. Menelaus wakes up. Hermione's like, "Father, like, Mama's gone. Like, oh my God, I'm not a witch, so we can't do anything." So he's like, "All right, no problem. Guess what, Hermione? I've got a hundred boys willing to fight for your mom." And so he calls up all those kings who wanted to bang their mom. <laughs> and he's like, hey, let's, we're all like secretly in love with Helen. Let's go to Troy and get her back. And they're all like, yes. And then Calchas, who's a prophet, says, wait, I had a prophecy. My name's Calchas the prophet. And here's the deal. And he goes to Odysseus, who's really smart. And he's like, Odysseus, like, I had a prophecy. We can't win this war without Achilles. And Odysseus is like, who? <laughs> And um, Calchas says, all right, like Achilles, like, all right, he's the, he's the son of Peleus and Thetis, the two people whose marriage started this whole thing, right? He's like 15 or whatever. He's the best of the Greeks. Like, he just is. Like, he's the best. So we need him. And Odysseus is like, okay, where is he? And they're like, all right, so we don't know because Thetis is a goddess and she's so sad that her son is mortal. She's hidden him away so that he won't die because she hates that idea. We think that they hid them in King Lycomedes' castle. So Odysseus is like, great. So he goes to King Lycomedes and um, <laughs> checks it out. And so Achilles is there, but he's disguised as one of King Lycomedes' daughters uh, so that he won't get caught up in the war because his mom warned them, him about this. By the way, while he's here, uh, he hooks up with one of the daughters, Demea, and they have a son named Ferris, who comes in later. Don't don't worry about him. He's gone for the most part. But anyway, so Odysseus shows up. Achilles is dressed like a woman, and Odysseus is like, I gotta figure out which of these girls is secretly a man. So he um, like pretends he's a merchant, and he puts out a bunch of dresses and jewelry and like makeup and whatever, and then one spear. And then Achilles walks up and is like, whoa, cool spear. And he's like, I think that's <laughs> And that's how it's done. That's how he got him. <laughs> yeah. Got so, him. yeah. Locked. Because Achilles didn't have the forethought to be like, uh, I'm going to actually try at all. And yeah. Check the spear. So Odysseus convinces him and Achilles agrees. And Achilles is like, great, you know what? I'm the prince of this zone. So I'm going to bring 50 ships and each of those ships is going to carry 50 Myrmidon soldiers. It's going to be great. We're almost to Troy. So they boat up. They meet up. They're about to sail to Troy, but there's no wind. You know why? Because Menelaus, who is Helen's husband, Menelaus' brother, Agamemnon, he's very important. He made Artemis angry because he accidentally killed one of her deer. And the prophet Calchas is like, hey, you won't be able to sail unless, I have this prophecy, like, trust me, unless Agamemnon, you kill your daughter, if a Janiah. And Agamemnon says, why do I have to kill my daughter? And he's like, look, I'm a prophet, just like, trust me. And he's like, okay. So he calls his wife and tells his wife to bring his daughter down to the zone. And he, she's like, why? And he's like, because if a Janiah is going to marry Achilles, or whatever, okay? And then she's like, great, Achilles is the best one of all the Greeks. So they come down there, and then as she's walking down the aisle to the altar, turns out it's not a marriage altar, it's a sacrificial altar, and they kill her. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, they just kill her. And then the gods are like, great, cool, like you can sail now, there's wind, awesome, thank you. Um, 
So in some myths, Artemis saves her and like makes her a constellation or whatever. But what's important is that Agamemnon's wife, Clymenestra, is very angry and she has 10 years to plan her revenge plot, which does happen well after the Iliad. But just keep that in mind. I don't get why she's so mad though. Oh uh, yeah, you know, women. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The winds pick up the Achaean soldiers. Sorry, Achaean means Greek. The Achaean army sends off to Troy. They are almost there. They get there. And the war begins. Finally, various gods take different sides. It's super great. Aphrodite takes the Trojan side. She likes Paris and Helen. She put them together. Hera and Athena take the other side because they don't like Aphrodite anymore. Who does? Um, no one does in this story, really. Uh, Zeus is kind of in the middle because whatever. Um, now the Greeks sack many a Trojan city on their way at one of them, uh, well, at all of them, Achilles does most of the legwork, but at one especially, uh, called Lernessus, Achilles picks up a princess, Briseis, as his war prize after killing her brothers and her mother and her father. Uh, now she's his war wife. Uh, he also picks up Chryseis, uh, who is the daughter of Chryses, who is a priest of Apollo. All right, so Chryseis is given to Agamemnon to be his war wife because he hasn't pissed off his wife enough. <laughs> now we're nine years into the war and that's where the Iliad begins. So all that oh. happens before the book that we're about to read. Um, yeah. 